And this crazy hype about chips in the hand barcodes has been going on since the 1970s. And it is not the mark of the beast. There was actually protests in the 1970s when barcodes were first introduced. And I will show you a very humorous example of a music video warning against it. Now this kind of thing comes up all the time and has done ever since the 1970s when barcodes were first introduced and people actually protested them. It doesn't really make much sense because barcodes are actually on the product, they're not on us and the text in Revelation 13 says it will be a mark on the hand or the forehead and while the RFID chips will if you get them be embedded in a hand, they're not being put here. I mean, why would they do that? Are you going to go and like swipe your face at the self checkouts to pay for things? I don't think so. And while it does link the mark to buying or selling, it also says more specifically that the number is the name of a man. So barcodes are just collections of numbers that are relevant to a product code. It's nothing to do with someone's name. And even if you calculated all the numbers in a barcode to equal 666, that would still be completely relevant to what John is writing about, because he says it is the number or the name of a man. And being that it is the number of a person, it is done in Gemantria, which is a coded system. So you can hide in plain sight the meaning of something that you don't want people to know what you're talking about, people who don't know the system. And with this, it is Hebrew Gematria. So you can work backwards on the number to try and figure out who the numbers represent. Now, it's not presumptuous or anything to try and think that we can figure this out. I mean, John even says in the same verse section that he's writing that to let anyone with wisdom and understanding calculate the number because it is the name of a man or a person. So there is an expectation from John writing this that his audience and the people who get the letter will be able to understand who he's talking about or at least infer who he's pointing to at some, in some way. And this was a common way of hiding information from people. There is ancient graffiti found in Pompeii actually where it says I love the woman whose name is 545. So people used it in a sort of humorous way, maybe a, to hide a secret relationship, maybe because they didn't want to actually say the name on the graffiti, where they graffitied on the wall. But they put the numbers so people who understood would know who they were talking about. And likewise with John, he puts the numbers so his audience will understand who he's talking about. And there is some good cases for who it refers to, especially in early history. Um, maybe not so much in modern day, where people have linked it to basically everybody, especially American presidents. <laughs> now, Revelation it is 666, but there's also a variant reading of 616. And because of this, I think it leads, lends more credence to who I believe that the number is referring to, and so do various many other scholars who studied the revelation and early church. Irenaeus around 170 wrote who he thought the 666 referred to and he thought it was relating to the word Latinos which is the Greek word for Latins and he says it seems to me very probable that this is the name of the last of Daniel's kingdoms referring to the prophecies in the book of Daniel they being Latins who now reign. So he's referring to Rome, who was, you know, the empire at the time. And, you know, in a general broad sense, I don't think he's wrong in pointing to Rome. I think Revelation is primarily speaking about the Roman Empire at the time and the persecutions they were doing. And more specifically, that the 666 in Germantia, using the Hebrew calculation, would point to Caesar Nero. And 
I will show you some a little image in a minute that shows how that calculates on the screen. And so I believe he is the beast being spoken of. And with the 616, you've got the alternative writing of his name, which also calculates that. So 666, 616, and both equal Nero. There are, of course, various other interpretations of this. The reformers thought it referred to the papacy, not necessarily a specific pope, but the office of the papacy in general, and certain words that were put on the pope, the vicar of Christ, I think they calculated it as. They also took a hint from Irenaeus in his Latin understanding of the number because the papacy um, Latinized everything. They put the mass into Latin, regardless of whether people spoke it or understood it. They equated the long period of the Dark Ages of the papacy's reign as part of that prophecy of Daniel. So there's various ways you can go with it. I think more originally, it's about the Roman Empire, the persecutions by Nero, and then later the other emperors, uh, Domitian, I think was the one who also did a lot of persecutions later. The early church fathers even said was like he had the same rage of Nero in his zeal for persecuting the church. And, you know, Nero, if you don't know, actually, was the terrible, terrible person. You can see why he would be considered the beast, because, you know, he he captured Christians. He covered them in the skins of dead animals to make them more tasty <laughs> for the wild beasts that he was setting upon them. So they would go and tear them to shreds all the more. And also he tied them to stakes to light up his garden at night by setting fire to them. So, you know, he was a very embodiment of evil, really. So I, I could see why he would be considered a beast and, an, you know, an antichrist, if you want to use that terminology. Although Revelation doesn't actually speak of the antichrist, but that's another topic. So anyway, I hope this is informative and you don't get pulled into the scaremongering of technology being the mark of the beast um, because while I think there is concerns with the way some technology is going I don't think it's related to the book of Revelation